In this Python tutorial, we will make a web application with a radio button using the Streamlit library. A text is printed on the web page according to the selected radio button. In the video, I will show you step by step how to make this web application. To support us, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the video. First, let's activate the web server. I open terminal. I open the command prompt. I go to Venn file. You can activate the web server using this code. The web server is currently running. Let's add a header. You can add text to the web page using the header function. I save the code file and refresh the page. We added a text to the web page. Now let's add the radio button objects to the web page. I am creating a variable. The first parameter I send to the radio function represents the title. Second, I will send a list. Each member in the list represents a radio button object. The first member is HTML and CSS. You can use this website to add an emoji. I will add the website to the description section of the video. I'm adding the rainbow emoji. The second member is JavaScript. I find the yellow circle emoji on the site. Third member C++. I find the blue circle emoji on the site. I save the code file and refresh the page. We created three radio button objects. The value of the created variable changes depending on the selected radio button object. We can easily find which radio button is selected by using an if query. I will print a text on the screen with the right function according to the selected radio button object. I also add if queries for JavaScript and C++. I save the code file and refresh the page. A text is printed on the screen according to the selected radio button object. HTML and CSS are automatically selected at startup. We can see this when I refresh the page. We can use the index value to change this or to ensure that no radio button options are selected initially. There are three radio buttons. Index values are 0, 1, and 2. If the index value is none, no radio button object will be selected initially. If the index value is 2, the C++ value is selected initially. If the index value is 0, the HTML and CSS value is selected initially. If the index value is 1, the JavaScript value is selected initially. Now let's do a different example. First, I define a key for radio button objects. 
we can deactivate radio button objects by using the disable value. In this case, no radio button object can be selected. If false, radio button objects are activated. Let's do an example. When the first radio button object is selected, all radio button objects become deactivated. I define session state with a value of disabled. If visibility is not in session state, I can set disabled value to false. In fact, this value represents the initial value. The radio button object will be active initially. If true, the radio button object is deactivated. As you can see, objects cannot be selected. I activate it as false. The object is initially active. I then deactivate it. When the first radio button object is selected, all radio button objects will be disabled. Let's try. I choose an option. Objects became deactivated. If I use disabled true in if queries, it becomes disabled when the second object is selected, not when the first object is selected. In this video, we learned how to use radio button objects. To support us, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the video.